What's up, everybody? It's your favorite ET Reboot's favorite nerd, and today we are looking at the 3A Bumblebee. This is on loan to me from Mr. Jake, and I got news for you. This thing's got my whole basement smelling, and I don't mean in a bad way. Jake, your house smells good, bro. God bless. House smells like fragrances. You gotta be married. You have to be. There's no way a man's house would smell like this. Like, <laughs> house smells good, dude. God. But I bet you my wife ends up coming down here just to hang out a little bit, just how good this house smells. It's crazy, but it's good. Better than it's smelling like some <laughs> <laughs> You know, not for nothing, uh, with like kind of the stigma and reputation that a lot of like, you know, toy collectors have. It's funny to me that I haven't got toys because I've been sent a lot of toys from the community to review. And I, it's funny, like it's it's a credit to us that I've never gotten a toy where I'm like, oh man, homeboy's house needs a little potpourri in that unit. Luckily, they've all worked out pretty well. But this one is, this, <laughs> this one's different. This one smells good, dude. Your house smells good, bro. I don't know what to tell you. I'm going to go out on a limb and say you're married because it's the only way that would make sense for me for it to smell this way. But tell her she's doing a little Lord's work. It's solid unit. All right, so this guy does come with some accessories. Let's take a look at it. So he comes with two extra sets of hands in addition to the fist hands that you saw in the opening footage. They're all decoed the same way, so we'll talk about that when we go through the figure. But they have what they call action hands left and right, and then relaxed hands left and right. I usually call these just posing hands. It isn't, it's not, just to be fair, it's not the most dynamic of poses. Like, I feel like if you had one doing this and one doing something else, it might be a little bit more interesting. But they're all decoed beautifully, and it's nice to have the options. Obviously, as you can see, they just swap out with ball pegs. And they're a softer plastic as well, so you don't have to worry about damaging them or anything, like the fingers, because they're, you know, long, and they would be fairly brittle if they were probably, you know, regular plastic, but they're a softer plastic, so you shouldn't have an issue. He comes with an alternate head with the battle mask. It's, once again, it's kind of decoed the same way, but we will talk about this a bit because we have like this translucent plastic on top for the eyes and it does have kind of the bumblebee honeycomb sort of uh, style, you know, um, you know, sculpted in, which is cool. And then we have the silver with a wash. We have the yellow with the wash, which is kind of consistent throughout the figure. And then some silver accents as well. All works and then it plugs in on a single ball peg. Also... Oops, sorry. Also, his antenna do uh, come up and down, so you can articulate those as well, which is pretty cool. And he comes with the two doors. They're decoed beautifully, and they're identical, just reverse. Um, they plug into his back. We'll show that here in a minute. They're detailed beautifully. On the inside, we have this, like, gunmetal, and then we have the silver accents. We have the gunmetal, a different type of gunmetal on the, the part that hinges in. Silver accents, translucent windows. The yellow with a wash which looks beautiful like they this is some of the best washing on a figure i've ever seen to be fair and then uh, the silver is painted on the handle here and then across the line there so really well done to utilize those you just replace these two pieces here and i'm trying to be awfully careful because i don't want to have to replace this gentleman's figure so we're going to do this one time and then we're going to Ah, there we go. And then we're going to call that a day. So, there you go. And then we have the blaster. Once again, deco beautifully. The yellow with the wash. The silver. You can see the fingers in there, which is pretty cool. I never noticed that in the movie. Silver with the wash. A little gold accent in there. And then we have the top part, which is silver and copper. And then airbrush black at the tip to kind of you know, demonstrate the wear and tear of it being used, the heat and so forth. So all that stuff works beautifully. You see this hole here? You take the figure and remove the forearm here. Oof, what was that? Let's put this back on. So that goes up in there. And then this comes into that peg. And there you have it. So let's take a look at what all of it looks like. And there he is kind of all armored up. And it's a good look. He looks good. We'll have some more dynamic poses and stuff at the end. He also comes with the display base. I've been warned that once you insert these pieces here, it's very challenging to get out. So I'm not going to go through it. I will show how it works. We have the 3A and then the Transformers Bumblebee that's painted on there beautifully. And then all the detailing work on the base, which isn't anything magnificent, but it's kind of good enough for sure. It's kind of the standard, right? Nothing that blows us away, but kind of a, maybe slightly sharper than what we're used to. And then we have the stand here. This piece uh, raises up and down. You release release it here and then put it into position there and then this will hinge so that it will stay in line with the base right 
This piece does lower and raise. To lower it, you push on this, and then to raise it, you just raise it up. And then this piece, you just move this out and then put it back in to adjust for where you want this to plug into him, and we'll show where that is as well. It's right here on his backside, and it's this piece that comes out, and I don't know if I'm gonna go through the kind of, let's give it one fair shake. Yeah, I'm not gonna do it. It's this piece, it's this cover that comes out, and then this plugs in. Gimmick-wise, there is a light-up feature. It's a button that you press on the top of his head that does light up the eyes, and the same goes for the battle mask. And there it is with the lights turned off, and it looks good. All right, let's talk about the figure. So the head is on a ball peg, as we saw, into the neck, and then the neck sits on a ball peg into the chest. So it's two ball pegs. It basically gives you everything a double ball peg would had it been through the center sheath of the neck. So good to go. The yellow entirely throughout is washed. And I, I know I've mentioned this before, but it's just, I can't express how well it's done. It's a tricky beast and it looks really good. The silver looks as though it has been washed as well. But you know, I'm not sure if this isn't some sort of spray, like a, like an airbrush but I'm guessing it's a wash because it's kind of pooling down here in some of these channels. So that looks good as well. And then like there's all like coppers, different types of silvers, like really gives a very metal look, has a great weight to it. Feels very professional. It feels like a, like a, like a top shelf product. All right. So the eyes, we have the kind of translucent plastic over top. And it does have like almost like that eyeball look. Let me see if I can get in there a little tight. I'm not sure if you guys can see that or not. Yeah, it does have like that eyeball look, which is pretty cool. Autobot symbol on the head, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. So great range, left, right here, and I think that's where you're gonna get it because it's hard to kind of get your fingers on the neck to try to move it there. So. And I think I haven't had any issues. And then your antenna do collapse. So all good. Now, for the chest, we have moving chest pieces. This allows for more shoulder articulation. So you can kind of pivot it here. And it just comes right out on a ball peg. So you can look at it. It's even detailed underneath, which is nice. And it has a translucent piece on the headlights. And then we have the silver accents that are washed, the yellow that's washed, and so on and so forth. Same for this side. This is on a ball peg, and it might be a double, but it yeah, it might be a double. And then the lower one is just a, you know, that's a single ball peg on the lower one into the pelvis, and then a double from the chest into the abdomen, which is really, I mean, that's, that's the perfect way to do it. So using both, you can get him bent over a good bit and back. You can get the little teapot, Oh, and I turned the I turned the heads on the, the button. We already talked about it. So the front one even hinges or uses that double ball peg as well. So like it's really beautifully done, like engineered action figure wise. So kudos to them for that. All those detailings down here with like the belt, you know, the belt there and different pistons and so on and so forth. Beautiful, beautiful. On the back, we have the translucent and then all sorts of metal detailings. And then we have the, the tires and wheels up here. So, good to go. The arm. So, we have the shoulder pad. That's on a double hinge. So, there's a hinge up here and then there's a hinge inside the yellow piece, like closer to the back plate. Silver detailings, dry brush. I mean, um, washes on the yellow, I believe. And then we have a universal joint at the shoulder on this hinge and then a separate hinge inside the only problem it's not a problem but the only limitation if you can see here how this hinges in and out a lot of times when they engineer this joint you know companies will put it here so that it hinges forward and back or here so that it hinges forward depending on which way you want to go or they'll use a ball peg but I, I think that this way is better it's just that this gets you more arm up movement where I'm not sure that more kind of across the chest wouldn't be better but look at the range 
really solid. And then you get the 360 pretty much around. You do start bumping into the tires and stuff, but you, I don't think there's going to be a pose that you can't get them into in regard to the arm. I had to come back and cut this in as I was editing it. I wasn't very clear. That's not to say that he doesn't have a bit of a butterfly. There is a ball peg on this socket here that does allow it to get forward and back movement. It's just not what we're used to in regard to this hinge engineering that's usually in these type of figures. You have a bicep swivel here, same detailings for the silver, and then you have a double jointed elbow. One is down here and is covered by that little ring, and then the other one is up towards the base of the elbow and gets you a great range, even with the kind of clunkiness of the design of the arm. So that's nice. Obviously, the ball peg at the hand gets you in out. If you get the kibble out of the way, it'll get you a little bit of up down, and then the swivel. Once again, you do have to work around uh, kind of the parts of the figure, and that is something that we do have to talk about in regards to this guy is that just I think it's mainly due to the design of the character but there are a lot of times where you're like man I, I really want to get like just a you know a degree more of articulation so you you can you can try to maneuver some of these pieces out of the way and most of them are designed to do so in order for you to do it but even still there have been poses that I've tried to get them in where I'm like man if I just had you know just a little bit more I could get kind of the perfect pose um, and I think that's mainly due to the design of the character in the film, more so than what um, 3A has done, but still something I noticed. All right, moving down. Hips, universals. Now, like I said, we have this piece here, double hinge. We can get that down. We'll get the arm out of the way. And you get a pretty impressive range. Do the same for the other side. But once again, I'd be lying to you if I didn't say that, like, uh, when you see some of the shots I put them in at the end that I was there was a couple times where I was like man if I just had a little bit more but I mean that's nothing to cry about right great range and then forward no issue back no issue so and then these pieces obviously double hinge up and collapse to make a clean look afterwards so and that is the way to do it and it's the same for the shoulder pads um I just had a conversation recently on, on the patreon about how shoulder pads that are attached at the you know the clavicle or collarbone area they never work as well as shoulder pads that are attached to the shoulders this is the way to do it same with this kind of um armor here but every now and then uh we'll have ones that are attached to the collar uh, hasbro is famous for doing it uh, mafex will do it etc so this is the way to do it and they did it i think as well as they could we have a thigh swivel built around the universal. Not the greatest range, but if you know my general feelings on th thigh swivels, you don't need the greatest range, especially when you have an ankle swivel, because that's more so what we use, right? Anatomically speaking, like we don't have a thigh swivel. You know, it's just straight down. It's like a, a ball and socket joint for us here. And then, you know, the, the lower leg bones is what allows the foot to move. So I'm, a, I'm okay with how they did that. We have double jointed knee and it's beautiful one of my favorite things about it so watch the moving pieces watch the knee cover watch this piston and watch the joints just very well done very professional very well done it's a little tight you know but beautiful joint and great range Everything looks good for the lower legs as well, detailing-wise, with silvers and metals and coppers and yellows and washes, etc., cetera, etc., cetera. so kind of business as usual. We have a couple moving pieces here, including this flap that covers the ankle engineering here, and we have one in the back. I don't want to... I thought this moved. Maybe I'm wrong. I thought I got it to move earlier. Maybe I'm wrong. Uh, so, using it, ankle tilt up, ankle tilt down, I thought that moved, but maybe I'm wrong. And then we have a rocker. You can see it is on a hinge, which is like a proper rocker. And not the greatest range, but definitely in there. So 
I'll tell you, I haven't had much issue getting the ankle movement to kind of match what poses the kind of rest of the figure lends itself to. Like I said, there's there's times where I feel like I could get a few more degrees out of the hips. I would be happier. Uh, and then and then I would want a little bit more out of the ankle. But for the basic engineering of the figure, I haven't found any issues. And then we have um, translucent on the back. That looks great as well. We also have that up here on the hips. And there he is from the back. It's beautiful. I mean, like it's a really beautiful figure. And I mean, it's it's I mean, I think it's arguably sculpt wise, you know, it's perfect. You know, it looks just like him. So let's do some size comparisons. Size comparison wise, there it is with MP Magic Square Optimus. So with his antenna extended, it comes up to about the top of his chest. And for S and G's, there he is with Bumblebee, the MP. And there he is next to Tarn. And the reason why I bring this up is because my buddy T2RX6 raised a question with, with the price difference between these guys, can I see an obvious difference in quality? And the answer is no. So Bumblebee is 134 on, at BBTS, just as a point of reference. And Tarn was like 400 bucks. Now don't get me wrong, I can name you things about the Tarn that are better. For instance, the joints on Tarn, all of them move much more elegantly smoother they're all perfectly toleranced the bumblebee not so much but i'm not sure that that's 300 dollars or i guess a little shy at 300 dollars. so no no i cannot i can't explain it i can't explain why one is so much more money than the other but they're both beautiful just something to chew on perhaps because a lot of it is really easily compared between the two right both have bases both come with accessories both have light up features tarn has more to be fair but both have light up features both are engineered extremely well as actually like there's just a lot of similarities between the two, the most glaring difference is the price. So I think it's an interesting point. So let's talk about the negatives. There are a few and I just want to talk about them. Some of the joints are a little tight and with that and having to deal with the kibble, not the kibble, but the armor pieces that are on double hinges and trying to get them out of the way, I, d I did keep running into this fear of, I don't want to exert too much force and over push this thing and then it finally gives, only to give a little too much with the amount of force I was putting into behind it. And I don't want to over exaggerate things. It's not like I was trying to open a locked door or anything, but it was just the joints, some of the joints are a little stiff and they might give after a, you know, some play and some posing and some messing with. So yeah, and I got news for you. That's it. That's all I got. It's really just the tolerance of the joints. The positives though are tremendous. The sculpt, perfect. The paint, perfect. Can't stress it em enough. Probably the best washing I've ever seen on a figure. The materials feel great. There's die cast. Would have been nice maybe with a little bit more hardware, but not a big deal. It has a great presence. It's reasonably priced. It's extremely fun to mess with. You know, I don't like this design. I, I wasn't crazy about the movie. I don't really care about it any way, shape, or form, but I had a blast doing this review. You know, I've enjoyed this review more than I've enjoyed a fair amount of reviews I've done this year, and it's just because of how well it's done and how much passion went into it and all that stuff comes across. So, thanks again to Jake. I really appreciate the opportunity, and thanks for listening. Thanks for watching. Until next time, take care.